The Car Show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. Bumper to bumper. Helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy. Dave Riccio is off again this weekend, so uh, I brought in a little help. Tim Nelson, my right-hand man at Virginia Auto Service, uh, helped keep me in line and on time and uh, maybe answer some questions, Tim, right? Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Matt, and good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Saturday morning in uh, Phoenix. It's uh, it's always good to have you here as as backup, just like in the, in the shop every day. And uh, we are back in the studio. We had a good time. A, a lot of you came out and joined us last weekend at Tri City Transmission. We did a remote broadcast, and and Dave had an open house. So if you missed that, um, you know, keep your eyes out next year. Maybe we'll do it again. But you know, Dave is always likes to show off his shop. It's a beautiful facility. So if you're ever having a transmission problem or any issues. Go see Dave. Yeah, it was and, great. That was a great time there, and they had some really uh, good grilled cheese sandwiches. Yes, yes. So as always, Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're here every Saturday to help you, the motoring public, the car owners of the world, have a better overall experience with your car. Whether you are have a body shop question and have had an accident and need some advice, have a mechanical repair, um, maybe you got the list from from a shop and you're you're not so sure how to handle what they told you you should do. Uh, maybe you're looking at buying a new car. We've we've got lots of opinions and and some answers, and and, uh, and we can help you. And if we don't have one right now, we'll get you one. So all you've got to do is to get involved with the show is give us a call six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven six zero two two seven seven K T A R. So any of your car questions, car problems, don't be shy. And of course, now we're doing texting. So if you want to text in a question or a comment, you can do that at four one one nine two three. So today always as I said, open phones. I think we'll leave Factor Fiction off for Dave. That's uh Dave likes to do that himself, run the dials over there. And uh you know the weather's changing. Of course, it's a little bit warmer today than than it. Uh, you know, we got a little cool, it was a little warm. But I think after this week, uh, I wasn't paying too much attention to the weather. But now those it's gonna night, be cool. Those nighttime lows are dipping, and this is the type of time of year too where we're getting ready for some travel. We got the uh, you know the summer travels obviously out of the way, or maybe you didn't go anywhere this summer. But we're gonna go maybe up to Flagstaff, do some skiing, snowball, maybe drive to Colorado, New Mexico, California, wherever, maybe down to Rocky Point. So you wanna wanna make sure some some uh make sure the car is in good shape and we've got some tips that you can do at home to check just the basics yourself. Uh but Tim, when it's when it's cool in the morning and I know I'm hearing it even at the stoplight or leaving my neighborhood, I hear hear some of my neighbors' cars starting, and you get just that you know that temperature drop down in the fifties at nighttime, and, and and the car acts a little bit different. We might see some lights that we're not used to, or maybe some noises. Uh, Tim, what are some of the things that that the winter? You know, when we say winter, it's not like we have four seasons here where, where you know, we've got what two and a half, maybe yeah, two and so a half seasons, hot so. and then cool and you know hot again. But yeah, in the mornings you might hear your car might start a little bit differently, a little slower. You may have a battery issue. You may get a funny smell the first time you turn that heater on because it hasn't been u- used all we'll, winter. We'll and slow down a little bit. So on the battery, what's the sign? I mean, you're going to maybe get in the car and, and just – I think it's a matter of, of really being in tune with your car and paying attention. So ding, 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 the car cranks right over and starts right up. But maybe as it cools down here a little bit now uh, – yeah, just a little slight hesitation on that start where it doesn't hit, kick in right away. And it doesn't have to be that really like it barely started. I mean, sometimes I can go out to the parking lot and start a car and go, ooh, that thing's got a weak battery. Yep. Or, or what may appear to be a weak battery. It could be something as simple as a dirty connection. So that so, would be one. Yeah, and then the other thing was, like I said, you know, you might turn the heat around for the first time and you might get some smell or you might get some dust or stuff, which shouldn't be alarming. Uh, but then again, you might get a funny light that comes on, you know, when you're driving that horseshoe looking light and you might have a low tire and that's that TPMS light. And that's where you just need to get into a shop and have them check your tire pressures. Well, yeah. And, and I think the, uh, the tire pressure monitoring light is probably the most common light when we get a quick dip in temperature. And, uh, sometimes they're real pain to, to, uh, 
to reset. Yeah, uh, and most of the time, I think you can just go in and, and get you know air the air the tires yourself, get them aired aired up, and then drive the car, and that will oftentimes reset itself. You know, in the winter time too, as it cools down like this, and I think we do it at the shop. Depends on how you're using the car, but we'll go maybe two pounds higher on the tire pressure than what the sticker recommends because we have this fluctuation. You know, of temperatures. 30 degree temperature swing sometimes during the day. And of course, as you're driving the car, you're going to build heat in the tires as well. So depending on what time of day we're checking the tires or how, how, uh, what the temperature of the tires were when we set the pressures, you are going to have some fluctuations. So that, that's, um, that's the other thing. The other one that, uh, is pretty new and it happens in our scion at the shop there's a blue warning light on the dash and, and it looks like a, ra- a radiator with a little uh you know steam coming off there or something and when that thing is red you're overheating you're in big trouble but blue is the car is just not warmed up yet and the manufacturers want to get these cars warmed up as soon as possible for emissions, for for a number of different reasons, just to make the car run efficiency so if, efficiently. So if that car doesn't get heated up fast, you can get a check engine light on, or you get that blue temperature light or that blue radiator light coming on. So what do we, Tim, uh, in the shop, get a check engine light? One of the symptoms might be, are are the code? I don't know the code numbers. I'm not going to try to to yeah, recite that, them off the top of my head. I but, think it's a P one P zero one two eight, and that's for the thermostat. Well, it's yeah, and it's a, yeah. not necessarily the thermostat, yeah. so that, yeah. you know, let's don't get into the, the code says what it is, but the engine not reaching operating temperature. So in the computer system, it knows that if everything is working well in that car and you start the engine and you go to drive, after two to three miles, that engine should be 190 degrees, 200 degrees, and if it's not there, that will turn on the check engine light because it's not efficient, and that check engine light is is partially for emissions, Is, is that's why that's there. You can get uh, low, uh, poor fuel mileage. If you're dumping a bunch of extra fuel into the engine that it doesn't need to burn, it's just tough on the engine, makes the oil get dirtier faster. And oftentimes that's a that's a thermostat. But the symptom related with that is we'll get people that come and say, it's my car, it's, I'm not getting heat. I get all the way to work and it barely gets barely gets warm so that that would be an indicator that maybe you have a bad thermostat or something like that yeah we had a we, we had a car in the shop this week that the, it didn't have heat and, and it was because it was low on coolant because it had a, a leaking water pump but you just being low on coolant is going to affect the system and you're not going to get the proper heat that you, that you need did that turn on a check engine light uh no it no? did not no okay, but it yeah. just didn't have enough hot water running through the yeah. through the heater core to make that that heat transfer yeah, she, so. yeah it was like you know typically it would get on the heat would come on within a mile before she got to work, but it was taking much longer. Well, you know, that's interesting. There's no heat, but we get that question a lot of time in the summertime. Maybe the parent of the the son or daughter that was driving the car or the husband or wife had the argument of, why didn't you shut the car off? It was overheating. Well, if there's no coolant in there to make that heat transfer to the gauge, it's not going to, or to the sending unit, it's not going to turn the light on. In the same way, you're not going to get heat transfer to get cold air or to get the, the air inside the car warmed up. So power steering noises, we used to call it morning sickness on the GM cars. The power, you know, when it's cold out, the fluids contract just a little bit. So the first turn in the morning, maybe the power steering is a little bit low. Maybe you have a leak that needs to be addressed. Maybe you don't. I mean, power steering fluid is not supposed to get used up. So chances are if you need a pint, it it went somewhere or or a few ounces. It went somewhere. Um, And sometimes it's just, just... a little low we can service those fix that by just adding some fluid a lot of times or maybe it's one of those deals where it's it's time for service maybe you have some seepage at the rack and pinion and and i mean tim we've fixed a lot of i mean you don't fix a leak necessarily but you can slow a leak without having to do a big repair you have a rack and pinion unit on a car that could cost how much a thousand dollars that are you know that we may be able to slow it down or even stop it with a with a service yeah Servicing the trans, are servicing the uh, the power steering fluid, getting fresh fluid in there. We use a fluid that has a little bit of a vitalizer, kind of like your your uh, your uh, high mileage oil. It's just something in there that treats the seals just a little bit different. And if you can service that for one hundred fifty dollars instead of spending a thousand dollars, that might be something. Yeah, it's a no brainer there. <laughs> yeah, take <laughs> take care of your your noises there. Um, 
Another that, thing. Another thing I was going to say is that when you come in and when you're, you're talking to your service advisor, you want to explain to them, talk to them about what you're going to be doing the winter. You may be going on a trip, you may be taking it to Colorado, even going to Flagstaff, and we may just look at that car a little differently. You know, we want to put that windshield washer fluid in there that has the antifreeze in it so it doesn't freeze and. Those kind of things, just the communication that this time of year is important, where it is all the time, but, you know, you know, just so we know what you're doing with your car this winter. Yeah, it's best for us to know how you're using your car. So 602-277-5827. When we come back, we're going to have some tips for you that you can check out yourself at home on your car or to ask your shop. Make sure to check these things while I'm in. We'll be right back. It's the Good Guys, 16th Southwest Nationals at Westworld in Scottsdale, November 15th through the 17th. This is the can't miss event of the season. Check out over 3,000 classic American vehicles at our giant show and shot, including hot rods, customs, muscle cars, and trucks. And don't miss the Champions Arena. Visit vendor exhibits and shop the swap meet and cars for sale corral. Plus, enjoy free fun stuff for the kids. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Good Guys, celebrating 30 years of cool cars, cool people, good times. Next to your family, there's nothing more precious than your castle, right? Keiko Roofing understands that, which is why we are crazy about quality and protecting you, your loved ones, and your biggest investment. Don't wait for an emergency at your castle. If your roof is more than 10 years old, have the trusted pros at Keiko Roofing give you a free inspection today. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Keiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Keiko has you covered. At Keiko, we're proud to install peace of mind by using only the finest materials with the most skilled workers, all backed by the industry's best owner's pride guarantee. Since 1994, Keiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs with over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend or family member. For a free checkup and financing options, call 602-944-4600 or go to keikoroofing.com for more details. Keiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. There have been so many changes in Phoenix over the past couple of decades, but one thing has not changed in all that time. Kurtz, family owned and operated, Kurtz Auto Repair has been reliably servicing and repairing vehicles for Valley car owners for over 24 years. Just one block east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell, Kurtz has done it all with a perfect Better Business Bureau record. For service, call 602-588-2878 or check them out online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. Dave Riccio uh, didn't want to work two weekends in a row, so he is he is off, uh, maybe recovering from the remote that we did at his shop last week. So I've brought in Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service. And Tim, is, thanks for coming in, spending your Saturday here. Just like a relief pitcher. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm in the bullpen when you need me. Right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> One of these days I'll just do the show by myself, but I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, uh, it's it's the, the, the comfortableness of, uh, the confidence of having having somebody there to fall back on. So if I'm like, duh. And, and, you know, and we've known each other for, you know, forever, it seems like, you know. Just ended up being my 16th year. It was October. A month ago, yeah. to yesterday yeah. or today, yeah. I guess, 16 years at Virginia Auto and, Service. And I've known you for, I think, 18, so it's, you know, it's we, it's like almost being married. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. It's funny. People call the shop. They're like, Tim, now it's Matt. How did you guys sound alike? You know, it, it's, you know we're on the same cycle now. We've uh, sound alike and... Uh, I guess we have our moments. We fight like cats and dogs, uh, and two minutes later we're having lunch, and, yeah. and uh, it's it's always interesting, <laughs> interesting at the shop, but uh, definitely a familiar face at uh, at the shop there. So again, I appreciate you coming in. And if you want to get involved in the show, car questions, car problems, anything to do with your car, six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. So earlier we were talking about the transition from the warmer weather to the cooler weather and some of the noises and different things that, that may be happening on your car. So if you've got some of that happening, uh, give us a call, let us know, and, and maybe we can point you in the right direction, uh, get you to a shop if you need one. Um, if you are looking for a good shop or a new shop and you don't have one, if you have a good shop and you have a good relationship with these people, that is important. It's like the doctor, the dentist, it, it ranks right up there in, in those top things that you need to have. Stay with them. 
Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, if they're really good, send them to us. We're, we're always looking for good people to be part of our program because uh, we want to send good people to good shops. But if you're looking, go to bumper to bumperradio.com and uh, body shops, mechanical shops, tire shops. There's a there's a whole list of people there. So, Tim, we've got several phone calls here, and we're going to try and help Tim in Scottsdale first with his 1998 Jetta. Tim, what can we help you with? Morning. Hey, I um, I just recently did like a full rebuild on the front end of my daughter's Jetta. Changed out the wheel bearings, tie rod ends, ball joints, things like that. Um, now she's telling me, and I've heard it when you drive it, you get up around 40, 45 miles an hour, you you hear this noise, and it almost sounds like it's either a bearing or I'm hoping it's not something in the transmission. And um, I don't know how to really identify that. I'm going to do it yourself first. So I don't know if you can point me in the right direction or if there's maybe a shop that can help me identify it, and then I can go home and fix it. Well, when you – when okay, so you've got to get up to 40 or 45 miles an hour, and, and then what happens? Well, you just hear the – I mean, so you, I think the noise is there. It's just – it gets louder and louder. When you get up into the 40, 45 miles an hour, it's very loud. It's not like it's a, grind, a grinding, but it is – sounds like almost like heavy road noise. Um, it's definitely more on the driver's side than on the passenger side. Okay. Um, and I just it... up on jacks and jack stands, and I got it running up around 20 miles an hour, and I put a, you know, a long extension wrench, and I felt around, you know, like you do with uh, stethoscope type of right. diagnostics. And when I put it on the, the housing, you know, the holds, the brakes, and everything, you can definitely hear noise. Um, okay. Why did you replace the wheel bearings? They were bad. Okay. So they and was this noise part of that that you were trying to solve? Were the, were the wheel bearings noisy as well? Well, prior to that, I mean, you could just tell there was a lot of slop and play. Okay. And so I jacked it up, and you could definitely feel it. So I, you know, I took those out. I bought the bearings. I took it to a uh, a machine shop, an automotive machine machine shop, and had them press the old ones out, press the new ones in. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if they overpressed them. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm hoping if that's all it is, it's an easy fix. If it gets into the tranny. And I don't know what to do. Right. Now, are you in North or South Scottsdale? North Scottsdale. North Scottsdale. So Air Park Auto Service is one of our shops up there. And, and uh, north of that, even Combs Auto Repair is a good shop. I'm not so sure that they're they're on the list. But, the um, you know, noise over the radio is, is, yeah. is a tough one. Someone's got to drive that, that car and hear it. But some of the things that you can do, if you hadn't told me you already replaced the wheel bearings, I would ha- tell you maybe swerve the car. You know, well, you can't even do that really at 45 miles an hour. But if you can get that noise to happen down around 20, and maybe have a light swerve to the right and then a slight mosey to the left, if you can influence the noise that way, I would suggest that maybe you have a wheel bearing problem. Uh, if the car's not all wheel drive. We've had some of the Audi products with the the bad rear drive shaft bearing that starts making that noise in that 40 mile an hour range. Transmission fluid, obviously, check to make sure the fluid's full. Oh, boy. Uh, it's just, uh, Tim, it's one of those things that test drive is, is going to be um, your yeah, best bet. Te- yeah, get a technician to test drive it with you. That's the, that's going to be the best thing to do. Yeah, so check those shops, bumper to bumper com. You'll find a couple of them up in your area. Or or Dave at Tri-City Transmission, they seem to be the master of fixing noises. And he'll be the first to tell you if it's not a transmission. He likes to deliver good news. No, it's not the transmission. It's X or Y. But there's not that many things up front there. There's not... Uh, there's not a, a bearing on the on the axle shaft on those, so it's a, a test drive is definitely in order. So thanks for the call, Tim. We're going to try Sal in El Mirage with the Honda Civic. Sal, what can we help you with? Hey, uh, yeah, I sold one Honda Civic. It's got about 230,000 miles on it, and a um, friend of mine was driving it, and all of a sudden just cut out on him. And uh, I've been working on this thing for about two weeks now, just pulling my hair out almost, and... Um, I checked the cam crank sensor. I'm getting a signal. I checked all the wiring going from the cam and crank sensor all the way to the ECM, and I got continuity. I got no resistance in the wires. I mean, you know, the wire's good. Um, Checking the wires from the coil pack to the uh, ECM, they're all good. Well, hold on. You might have got ahead of yourself a little bit. Is there – so when you're just driving down the road – the or he was driving, or she, whatever. The car just they shut just off. Shut out on him. Yeah. And now it cranks over, turns over, but yeah. it will not start. Yeah. Does the car have fuel pressure? Oh yeah. And oh, how I did how it. did you test it? 
with the yeah, gauge the or just thing I check to make sure and I can hear the pump just go a little bit and you know and I get okay fuel pressure and I check to make sure that fuel was flowing um I checked the uh, fuel injectors make sure they were working okay well how, okay but well, hold on a second when you say you check this stuff that, that's what it if you check it but you're not checking it right, that doesn't make mean that it's oh, good. I so, have, uh, annoyed lights, uh, so you have a pulse to the fuel injectors? Yeah, I got pulse and um, and then I got a uh, signal from the crank and the cam sensor going for the ECM, but nothing coming out. And do you have but spark? Anything. Yeah, but no spark. You have no spark. Okay. Yeah. I believe on that model is the is the uh, coil is inside the distributor cap. Al? Maybe not. Okay. Um, the coil could be inside the distributor cap on that one, and I've seen the Hondas where the spark will not make it out of the distributor cap, and you simply have a, a bad cap or a bad distributor rotor. So that would be one thing to be checking. Pull the cap off and see if you've got spark actually coming out of the coil and make sure it's not getting eaten up by, by the distributor cap. You've done a lot of testing and a lot of stuff, so... Um, it's going to be probably going to be one of those things to get into a shop. So when we get back, more tips on taking care of your car in the cold winter in open lines at 277-5827. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy. I've got Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service in helping with some uh, Help him keep me alive, keep me going today. My right-hand man at the shop. And, uh, you know, before the break, we were talking to Sal on a Honda Civic. He's, uh, it looks like he's got a condition. The car won't start. It's got fuel, but it just doesn't have any spark. And, Sal, the, the, that era of Honda, like I was saying, the distributor caps go bad a lot. Uh, you could have an igniter problem or just that, you know, and, and a lot of that distributor is serviced, those parts are serviced as the distributor assembly. There's also a part called a PGMFI, Program Fuel Injection, PGMFI Relay, that goes bad on a lot of those. And I, But I'm, I would think, my, if my memory is right, you typically lose spark and fuel. Uh, they're they're both affected by that. So it sounds like you've done a lot of testing on that. So good luck with that. And, and if you need a shop, I know there's SNS Tire out there in the West Valley, and I know they're plenty capable of fixing that car. And they can be found at bumper to bumper radio dot com. So again, as always, we're here to help you with your car every Saturday from eleven to noon. Dave decided to take the uh, weekend off, and some of the things we were talking about, Tim, be, uh, in the start of the show was the the transition from uh, cold, from warm weather to the cooler weather and, and uh, the sounds maybe, and the noises that you're going to hear in the morning. Yeah, and then but Cooper brought up a, a, talking about the holiday gaining weight can't help you keep your pounds off, but uh, help you with your car. But one thing that that uh, we see at the shop a lot is, and even in my, in my car, you start to uh, gather a lot of things in your car over the years or over the months. And, and occasionally that car needs to get a trip over to the dumpster and just start unloading some things. And I know when we're servicing cars at our shop, we're always checking the spare tire. And, boy, that can be challenging at times, right? I mean, oh, yeah. There yeah. is junk in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, way past the spring training, spring cleaning time for that yeah. trunk. <laughs> and, and so just imagine if you're on the side of the road with a breakdown or you have a flat tire on the side of the, the freeway and you're dealing with the golf clubs and all the grocery bags and the this and the that and, and all of that stuff. Maybe take the time. The weather's beautiful. Go to the car wash. Go to the dumpster. <laughs> well, you've seen it when you're driving on the freeway. Someone's there, and they got their tire, their car jacked up, and there's all this stuff behind the car because they've had to take it all out to get to the spare tire. Yeah. And, you know, we've got some stats here from the Car Care Council. October was National Car Care Month. And one of the interesting things, and, and I, would, I would be surprised that the number is this low, but 27% of the cars checked through this uh, – Car care month inspection lanes across the United States. Twenty-seven percent had a flat spare tire, and I used to have a towing company. It happened a lot. The worst thing to do is get a flat tire, and then go out there and find out that your spare tire is flat. But we can't check it 
if the truck trunk is full of full of garbage. So, and then how many times, Tim? I know you don't know how many times, but is is it not uncommon where someone has a noise in the car every time they turn? <laughs> yeah, and it's that. Uh, <laughs> bottle of water or something that's running around in the back there. <laughs> but, but it's almost more embarrassing. I mean, it, 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 you tend to not go for the easiest thing. We hear this noise. So we've got the car up in the air. We're checking this. We're shaking looking at this the struts, suspension. Looking at the suspension, and it's a water <laughs> it bottle. To be a, yeah, or an apple or a, you know something <laughs> bonk, bonk. Uh, it, it'll drive you crazy. So we've got uh, several phone calls here so we're going to go with Stephanie and Chandler she's got a new car question maybe we can help you Stephanie go ahead hi there how are you doing great how are you good 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 I have a 1998 Honda CRV and a 2011 Kia Sportage and we have a motorhome and we were keeping the Honda CRV to use as a tow vehicle behind the uh, motorhome right and I love my Kia, but unfortunately, you can't tow it. Okay. And so I'm looking to trade in to get a different tow vehicle. And I've heard about the Ford Escape, but I wasn't sure if that's towable behind a motorhome and if that's a good choice. Hmm. You know, I, I'm not sure on the towing. I think Camping World is probably the best resource for that. Um they would know, and I, and I would imagine that you can go on to some of the RVing blogs and, and such and probably get lots of opinions on the best tow vehicles. Uh-huh. I, the CRV is a good car, but unfortunately it's just not comfortable. Uh, my husband and I are both rather tall, uh-huh. and uh, that's why we enjoy the Kia because it's just more space, more roomier inside. Mm-hmm. Where the Honda CRV is a great tow, but it's just not, you know, roomy enough for us. Right. Well, and I think the most popular car that I see behind motorhomes are Jeeps, some some sort of Jeep. So uh, maybe that would be a good one to look at. Um, well, if, something, if they want something big, I drive a Nissan Cube. I don't know if that's towable or not, but it's well, it's real roomy. That's a, yeah, it's a uh, tiny, I mean, it's roomy for you being, being I'm tall. Big, I'm, being ta- I'm a tall guy, and it's very roomy, so I don't know if that's towable behind a... Yeah, I'm... I'm yeah. I'm leaning kind of more towards a Jeep or, you know, that, that Honda CRV, though. I don't, I forget what year you said it was, 97? It was a 98. It's a 98 uh, CRV. It has 148,000 miles on it. Those CRVs have changed a lot. There's been a couple of generations since 97, and, and you might find that that's a little bit bigger now than it was. So maybe it's, a, it's worth having a look at the, uh, at the CRV or even the RAV4. And those are nice, <laughs> nice vehicles now they've really really got them really well dialed in so if you get down to a car that you like and you want to send us over an email we can do some research research on that and see if it's if it's towable i'm sure they would know at the dealership um and again camping world is probably a great resource or just googling you know tow behind rv vehicles or or something like that and you'll probably get tons of opinion from from those blogs and that world out there, because you know, I truly just don't have the the, the answer for you. But I'd be leaning towards a Jeep. Yeah, so good. A Jeep. That sounds good, is what I'm thinking. So, thanks for the call, Stephanie. We are going to go with Robert in Peoria. Robert has a 2007 Hyundai Sonata. Robert, what can we help you with? Yes. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Uh-huh. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. Last couple mornings, um, it's been a little cooler outside when I head for work, and when I step on the gas pedal after I pull out of my driveway, um, for like the first 10, 15 seconds, I get like a really bad knocking noise coming from the engine. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I, I release the gas pedal, and the knocking noise stops. I step on it again. It continues. And then uh, after driving it, I don't know, half a mile or so, then it just stopped altogether. Is is there a rattle or knocking noise when you initially just start the car and don't drive it, maybe during that first 10 or 15 seconds of warm-up? No. No rattling noise? No rattling. Hmm. It's just when initially when I first pull out of the driveway and I step on the gas to go, that it, you know, it just it gives like a knock and almost like you know something's in there just tapping on the engine or something. Hmm. Well, you know, again, noises are tough. That that uh, you know, you could have a a belt, not necessarily a belt issue, but one of the tensioners or idlers. Tensioner or idler pulley, possibly that just is, you know, tight because it's cold and. Yeah, it could be knocking a little bit. Um, you know, when 
when when the things start to wear out and the, the the greases that are packed into those bearings originally is cold or it starts to to leak out um can cause some funny noises um, I would not tend to think you have an engine problem necessarily because I would like to think that that noise would be happening when it starts up yeah when you when on the initial startup um you know, that's one of those things where, you know, next time you're due for a service, if it's not soon, take it in the night before. Maybe you leave it for the oil change and let them know, hey, here's the noise that, that, I, that I have, and uh, here's when you do it. So please make sure to, you know, keep it inside overnight or leave it outside to where, the, where it gets stone cold and they can duplicate that noise. Uh, noises are, are, are tough to fix. I don't know how many times we have fixed the noise we heard. And then there's another noise that, <laughs> but, but the not the noise heard. the customer heard. So, so those those can be tough, and and sometimes it's even a case of leave the car, and then come down, and we'll start it and drive it together, because what you hear and what I hear may be two totally different things. But I I would not think that uh, that you have an engine problem. The the Hyundai's are are good cars. We don't see a lot of engine problems on those. I mean, we, we see them blown up because people are neglecting them. But if the car is, is taken care of, uh, we, we are not, uh, not seeing a lot of problems with that, Tim. I mean, no, anything else come to mind? No, just like I said, yeah, just get into some, to your shop and just have them, you know, make sure it's the night before and tell them that it uh, only happens first thing in the morning. That's the best. Yeah. Input. And then we've got a couple of texts that came in, Tim. Um, Dave is not here to answer the transmission question, but we don't need his expertise on this one. Uh, this person has a 2007 Toyota Avalon, 83,000 miles. When he checks the fluid, it says it's lifetime fluid on the dipstick, but he wants to know when should it really be replaced. Tim, what, what do we do at the shop? I mean, I have an opinion about marketing departments and... Uh, and Typically, we're replacing that fluid somewhere between sixty and 80,000 miles. Um, yeah. Lifetime fluid is more of, like you said, a marketing tool for the manufacturer. And um, Well, they're trying to make the maintenance-free car. Yeah. You don't have to do anything to this car till, till 100,000 miles. And I will tell you, on the Toyotas, that new fluid, it's called World Standard Fluid. I think it was 2007-ish when it, when it came out. Six or seven, yes. And it looks dirty when it's new, so you can't always rely on the color of the fluid to know if it needs to be changed. But I would be looking at that fluid. At eight, the car is 83,000 miles on it right now. I would definitely be looking at doing that, and it's not terribly expensive. I don't. I would like to know what kind of filter that car has on it before we decide to do what kind of service. If it just simply has a metal screen, we're not going to worry about changing the filter. Maybe we'll flush out, flush it out. Um, and when we say flush, there's no agitation going on there. We're just doing a transfusion of the fluid. But if the filter has some type of paper element or other filter, we're going to want to pull down the pan, replace that filter, and replace the transmission fluid that we lose during that process. And, and that's going to be the best way to service that. BMW, they say 100,000 miles or a lifetime on the fluid. Actually, it's not even 100. It just says lifetime. I always joke, well, what's the lifetime? When, when the transmission's burned up, now we change the fluid when we put in a new transmission? That's no good. That's the marketing department of the, of the, of the uh, manufacturer of the manufacturer selling cars, selling that maintenance-free car. And we've actually got some service bulletins uh, from the manufacturer of various transmissions saying, no, 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 that's not what we said. That's what they said. But if you want our transmission to last properly, service it at 62, I think is what BMW says, or service it at, at X. So that's where the relationship with the shop comes in. You can go in and ask those questions. You're just not getting boilerplate uh, you know, every car gets this, or or you're at the car wash, and they're asking if you want a transmission service before they've even looked at the car. So doesn't always work. So when we get back, more phone calls. We've got a couple people holding and still got some of those tips for you to check on things that you're on your car yourself. Hi, this is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Long name, right? But we have a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art repair facility that has an expert staff that for the second straight year has earned the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation. Just east of I-10 on Channel Boulevard. Find us at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com. 
Whether you live or work in Central Phoenix, there are a lot of reasons why so many of your friends, coworkers, and neighbors choose Virginia Auto Service to take care of their vehicles. An elite bumper-to-bumper radio approved and BBB A-plus rated shop right down the street at 7th Street in Virginia. Free transportation to and from your home or office. A free car wash with every service. After hours drop off. ASC certified technicians. Six months same as cash OAC. A Valley Best three year 36,000 mile warranty on all their work. Yep, for 18 years, your friends and neighbors have been choosing Virginia Auto Service for all the right reasons. Quality service at a fair price. So don't watch summer pass you by from the side of the road. Come check out all their online specials at virginiaautoservice.com and make sure your car or truck beats the heat this season. Virginia Auto, they're serious about service. Golf course conditions in Arizona are picturesque in the fall. With perfect temps and true parkland courses, you can't beat golfing at the Wigwam this season. And while other Valley golf clubs are closed for overseeding, Wigwam Golf boasts three 18-hole championship courses, the Gold, Patriot, and Heritage. So there's no disruption to play, featuring intricately designed courses by the legendary Robert Trent Jones Sr. The Wigwam offers unmatched diversity and challenge. Visit wigwamgolf.com to book a tee time today or find out more about their overseeding schedule and courses. This is Bumper to Bumper, News Talk 92.3, KTAR. All righty, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. This guy sitting across from me is Tim Nelson, my friend and co-worker and uh, buddy and manager and everything at Virginia Auto Service. And uh, Dave Riccio decided again to take the weekend off, so I, th- I think I'm going to be due. I guess I did my weekends off early in the year, and uh, I know Dave's got a couple coming up, so... We will always be here for you on Saturday, one of the two of us, every Saturday at 11, help you with your car, questions, and we're going to do our best to help you. We don't always have the answer, but you can follow up with us by email 24-7 at bumper2bumperradio.com, and uh, there's our partners there, the shops, they can get an answer for you. If you need a shop in your neighborhood and you don't know who the uh, who to get the interior work done, or maybe you need window tinting. If you don't see that resource on Bumper to Bumper Radio, call the shop in your neighborhood. I mean, Tim, we've got unlimited resources. We say we're your one-stop shop. We don't do everything. We don't do everything, but we know the people that do. Yeah, we can always, we can always refer to somebody that can get whatever you need done. Yeah. That's I mean, basically we, how we don't do interior, but we have the interior guy. We don't do body work. But Kevin at I-17 Collision, he's the guy that we send the cars to and always have. And and uh, whether it's window tint, whether it's windshield, you know, you got your windshield that needs to be replaced, leave it at our place. We don't do it. We'll help you facilitate getting that done. That way it's not, you know, they're not trying to figure out how to do it in your parking garage at the office or, or you don't have people coming out to your house. Make the arrangements with your insurance company and say, hey, my car is going to be at Virginia Auto Service or it's going to be at Kurtz Auto Repair or wherever shop that you choose. And, and, and all the bumper to bumper shops will help you get those things done that that you have that you have questions on. So we appreciate you listening. And we are going to go with we've got a couple people patiently waiting. We're going to try and get through these pretty quick. So first we're going to go with Wade all the way up in Cornville on a Volvo. Wade, what can we do for you? Hey guys, I've uh, got an eighty nine seven forty Volvo that had an intermittent overdrive issue. And it was definitely the wiring going to the, the solenoid was just corroded, shot, replaced the solenoid, and now it's hard failure. I do have 12 volts of the solenoid. You can hear it actuate. Known good relay in it. I'm just wondering if there's anything else with that AW71 transmission that would inhibit the shift into overdrive. Well, this is the one where I wish Dave was here to to answer. He can he can recite those <laughs> AWs and this is a FL whatever E number it is on the transmission. But that's the the Volvo with the with the uh, push. That's I mean that's my era of uh, Volvo. It's got the little push button for the overdrive on the side of the shifter, right? Exactly. Well. I know that I've replaced several of those back in the day when I was out in the shop working on cars. Those, those buttons on those shifters go bad a lot. Um, okay. However, I have, I mean, if you crawl under the car, you can hear that solenoid actuating. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've checked, you know, the wiring all the way through, you know, the button, the relay. 
And like I said, it was an intermittent issue. Shifts into the first three absolutely beautifully. Drives like a top. 180,000 miles. Fluid's good. I will tell you, I have not done a filter in it lately. Uh, yeah, but that a filter's not gonna not gonna not gonna do that. Um, you know, and you said you replaced the solenoid. I did. Okay, and I'm I just can't even picture how the solenoid works on that car, but maybe the solenoid. Is mechan or it sounds like it's working, it's clicking, but maybe it's not opening and closing the valve, if you will. And, and really, I am not going to be able to give you much more information on that. I just don't. I'm not. That's not top of mind awareness for me. So I would suggest following up with Dave on that. Send him an email. Go to the contact link at bumper to bumper radio dot com, and and, and uh, Dave will be able to help you with that, or give him a call at Tri City Transmission and see what what he can do. But Boy, at any point now, I'm just I'm pure speculation and guessing. So I appreciate the call, Wade. Thanks for listening from all the way up there in Cornville. And we're going to go with Aaron in Phoenix on a 2004 Dodge Ram. Aaron, hopefully we can help you. What do you got today? Uh, I've got a, a 04 uh, Ram 1500 uh, with uh, plenty of miles on it. I have an issue where uh, with my front end, when I brake hard, I get a real hard knock. Um, I took it down to your lineman shop, and uh, uh, they told me to replace my uh, ball joint, so I did. Uh, I thought it might be the bushings, lower arm bushings. I uh, replaced uh, uh, the the left side, which is the side where I hear that noise, but I still keep getting that. Okay. Well, you know, noise on the front end of a truck is... is those can be difficult to find, and, and, and I think that's one of those cases. You went to the alignment shop, and they shook it down and probably saw a bad ball joint, so you've got to start with the most obvious. That that clearly didn't take care of it. So, again, you need to get back in there, shake down the front end, uh, drive the truck, try and isolate which side it's coming from, and, and uh, just try and pinpoint. You can get dry bushings that will that will – uh, make noises or, or the bushings get really hard and, and you may not see a lot of movement when you're shaking the thing down on, on the on the rack or on your jacks at home, but then you get the load of the truck underneath them. Another uh, place I'd be looking for a knocking noise, you might have the brake caliper moving in there. When it when you step down on the brakes and it clamps onto that rotor, the, the caliper might move inside of its its housing or inside the bracket that it Rest on it. Could be could be a worn out spindle where the where that lays. It could even be uh, just missing or lacking some hardware on the brake. Yeah, we had a no. We had a car. We had a Dodge truck in the shop just six months ago with that issue, and it was the caliper. So look, at, I, I would be looking at that brake caliper. It, and so the caliper was making was actually the. And then we had to get a caliper assembly or the or just hardware. Or? The hardware for the pad. Okay, and so. The, and it was shifting yeah, every time she broke, she was breaking. It was making a knocking noise. Well, and I remember we had that uh, Dodge. It wasn't a pickup. It was the Dodge version of a full size Blazer, the Ram Charger, or Ram whatever. And, and uh, the guy would put the ball joints in, but they were bad. I mean, they were they were done at another shop actually, a four wheel drive specialty shop, and they sent the guy to us with alignment, and the brand new ball joints were bad. So not always just because they're new does it necessarily mean they're they're good. So. Uh, again, Aaron, if you're looking for a shop in Phoenix, bumper to bumper and uh, get that thing shaked down and, and we'll and see what we can do. So we're going to sneak in Benny here with a battery problem in Phoenix. Benny, what can we help you with? Morning, Tim and Matt. Morning. Um, yeah, hey, about a year ago, uh, getting ready to go up north, I got two batteries in my truck, dual batteries, uh, and I just I noticed one of my clamps was loose, completely off. I know they was on there tight because I put them on myself. And uh, I recently replaced those batteries, uh, and I can't get the, the clamps tight enough on one of the batteries. Uh, to, I, I can't turn it with my hand, you know, with my hands, but uh-huh. I can't turn them, you know, like put some channel locks on them and turn them. And anyway, uh, that first time that happened, I just trimmed the tips and got it, you know, close enough. I'm, is, is there some problem with these clamps that after a while uh, something happens with these things you can't get them tight enough because now I'm at the point where I got to trim the pits on these other two clamps you know and I'm wondering if it well if it's tight enough that I can't turn with my hand but I have to use a tool 
Is that tight enough? Well, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I think you know some of the things we see in the shop where people don't get the battery clamp all the way down that battery. Head, the the lead on the battery is tapered, and if you've got it up towards the top, you're not going to get it get it down. So maybe it's one of those cases where you can loosen the bolt, spread the clamp down a little bit, or spread it open, and then get it pushed all the way down on the battery on the on the lug on the battery, and that might help. It sounds like maybe you already tried replacing the terminals. I hate to put on those trimmed-in terminals. Uh, next case might just be, unfortunately, a set of battery cables. So good luck with that. So thanks, everybody, for listening today. Thanks, Peter, for running the controls. Thanks, Tim, for coming in and help us answer questions. We'll see you next week.